Human rights groups in Nigeria are threatening legal action after the arrest and detention of Sahara Reporters' website founder and former presidential candidate Omoyele Sawori. He was picked up by police during a candlelight procession that he organized against bad governance on New Year's Eve. Several other activists were also arrested. Activists at the procession who managed to avoid arrest say that police arrived at the Abuja protest venue in seven vehicles and got rough as they rounded up Omoyole Sawari and several others. Sawari is a former presidential aspirant and leader of the Revolution Now movement, a growing political group often criticizing bad governance. In August 2019, he was arrested and detained for calling for a revolution in Nigeria. Authorities accuse him of a treasonable affront on government and have been monitoring him closely since his release in December 2019. His lawyer, Marshal Abu Bakr, is in Abuja and he joins us now via Zoom for the latest on this situation. Thanks so much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. Mr. Abu Bakr, what, what is the uh, situation yeah. with your client at this time? Mr. Omoyele Shawari, I think I should give a correct impression. He did not lead the candlelight procession, as, uh, as, uh, as, as earlier put out in the, in the media space. He was not part of the procession. Uh, Mr. Omoyele Shawari was at that gathering as a journalist. As, uh, you, as, as you are aware, Mr. Omoyele Shawari, as rightly pointed out earlier, Mr. Omoyele Shawari is the founder of the popular Sahara Reporters online media uh global so he was on the 31st of december 2021 2020 uh and the 1st of uh, january 2021 at that gathering as journalist so he was there as a journalist covering the particular candlelight procession crossover night to usher in the new year so having said that it was in the process of covering that uh that that procession that he was arrested by the Nigerian police who had initially been looking for him to arrest him for um, for his criticism, for his uh, sharp criticism of the government over the years. Now, as I speak at the moment, Mr. Mileshawere is still being held at a detention facility in Abuja. It is called the Force Intelligence Department Unit at the Rata Ngiriki, Abuja. I just left him in uh, less than two hours ago. Um, the situation is still as it was. Um, I think uh, that was yesterday, which was the... The fifth day of, uh, of, of January 2021, we moved an application for his bill and that of um, four other activists who were also arrested alongside him. Um, the court, after taking arguments for and in opposition to the bill application, adjourned ruling on the bill application till Friday, the eighth day of January 2021, for ruling. That is as to whether to grant Mr. Muller a bill or to refuse him bill. That the moment he's been charged for offenses that are ordinarily billable. Uh, the offenses he's been charged for uh, unlawful assembly, for disturbance of uh, public peace, and for conspiracy. So these offenses are under the Nigerian law, ordinarily billable. So we are very optimistic that by Friday, the 8th day of January 2021, Mr. Muller and the other four, the good for the granted bill to go back home and um, continue to enjoy their liberty because as far as we're concerned, they've done nothing wrong to warrant their arrests, detention and incarceration in the first place. The other four, are they also journalists or were they part of this uh, candlelight procession? Yes, three of the other four are activists. They are not journalists, they are comrades and they are activists. Three of the other four are activists who were actually involved in the candlelight procession. Now, the first person that was arrested, that is one Bulus Ekarem, was just a passerby. When the police sought on the procession, they began to attack and beat up protesters. Sure, I was not even part of the group that were protesting on that particular day or that were involved in that candlelight procession on that particular day. It was when he saw them from, because he was in a journalist, he was in the uh, Israeli reporter's journalist van covering the said uh, candlelight procession. So when he saw them assaulting the protesters, he came down from the vehicle 
and ask from the team leader, why are you assaulting innocent citizens? It was at that point that he was also beaten and dragged into a waiting police van. They came in seven police vans. They had been looking for him the, the, the previous days. They were searching everywhere for him. So the moment they heard that he was at that particular candlelight procession, as a journalist, they stopped on the procession with the aim of arresting him. So the moment he came back from the, uh, the, 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 the van, which, where, which he was in, covering the same event, they immediately stopped on him and started beating him up, and they arrested him. So the fifth person that was arrested with them, one of the other four, was arrested with Mr. Showery and the other activist, was a passerby. He was actually coming back from work on that fateful uh, evening, struck morning, from where he was working the previous day. And then when the police stopped on the gathering, there were commercial motorcycle riders around the junction where the procession was taking place. So the commercial motorcycle riders started complaining that why will you be beating up people who have done nothing wrong to you? Now, the police got upset and made an attempt at arresting these Okada commercial uh, motorcycle riders. In the process, the commercial motorcycle riders abandoned their bikes and ran away for their lives. Of course, they would naturally do that. So when they ran away for their lives, the police saw this man that was coming back from work. They mistook him for one of the Okada riders. So they arrested him and took about five other bikes, five other commercial motorcycles alongside him and took them to their... So there's a place called the SAS Abattoir. The SAS, the defunct SAS is the notorious special anti robbery squad in Abuja. We sit situated at a place called the uh, Abattoir. It's quite a very notorious place that is known for all the endemic human regulations in Nigeria. So they were actually taken there. And when they got there the next day, which was the first of, uh, of January, they were asked to make statements. And that particular well, that particular man, the bolus, informed them that he was not even part of any procession, that he was just a passerby and was arrested alongside them. Then, of course, because they needed uh, a lot of people to charge, they just locked him up with them and charged all of them to court. So he was not actually part of the protesters. But the other three, apart from Showere and these uh, other man, bolus, were part of the protesters. All right. I mean, it does seem uh, very much like the work of uh, that uh, defunct special. Uh, anti-robbery squad SARS uh, continues to do what it's doing. Um, is this uh, an isolated case, or are you seeing more and more of these kinds of arrests taking place? It is never an isolated case. As a matter of fact, I can tell you categorically that uh, the SARS was not really is not really defunct. The only thing they did was just change the name. But the same very violent and the same very violent officers that we've always known to comprise or to constitute this particular group known as SARS are still very much on the poor in Nigeria. They are, they are vehement deprivation. They are vehement deprivation of the fundamental rights of Nigeria that derogation from this right is still very much as it has always been. The same SARS officers that we've always known over the years who are in that same Abata Center are still very much on ground. So the only thing that was done by the government was just to change them from stars to SWAT. Now, this is how, this is what Nigerians did not really understand, which we think really did not make us at that time achieve the aim which we would have achieved from the onset. Now, people think that SARS is just the SARS squad that they know it as. Now, the SARS, which they think is SARS really, comprises of other units at that same building called Abatsua in Abuja. Now, within that same SARS complex of building, we also have the IRT. The IRT is as brutal, as deadly, and as abusive as the SARS units. The STS is as brutal and as deadly as the SARS units. The anti-violent crimes is as brutal and as lethal as the SARS units. So, Nigeria has only focused on this particular group known as the SARS, Although, of course, they have the negative part, they also have the positive part. But they are mainly known for violent clampdown on the rights of the Nigerian citizens. So the same thing they have been doing over the years before the protest that led to the uh, abrogation or to the change of name from SARS to SWAT is still very much on ground. And these same officers are still, with impunity, 
trampling on the right of Nigeria. I can tell you that categorically that it's on a daily basis that we have these issues. So, of course, Nigeria is no longer, of course, because I think the Nigerian people have been scared from now asking questions or making agitations to see to the end of this civilization. They've been scared. But the fact still remains that the same problems which led to that uh, NSAS protest are still very much on ground. I will still have the same lawlessness, reckless impunity, and abuse of power by these officials in Nigeria. I can tell you that categorically, it still happens. It's even worse than it was.